Hi guys, in this video we will be discussing the problem B of Halo 2023 which is a core forces contest. So let's get started. So problem B states that, uh, so there is this person, his pronunciation is very difficult so I am not going to do that. So person M wants to construct an array S1, S2 up to so on to Sn satisfying the following condition that each element is an integer number different from 0 so we cannot have 0 as an integer. And for each pair of adjacent elements, their sum is equal to the sum of the entire array. So what it basically means is that this is the sum of the entire array. And if it select to uh, any element SI, so SI plus SI plus 1 should be equal to the sum of the entire array. Uh, the constraint that have been mentioned uh, that has been mentioned is that n is less than equal to 1000 and t is less than equal to 1000. So with that in mind, let's get started. So although the uh, question had a sm had a pretty sp a small description, however, it will take some maths to get to that. So basic intuition that came in my mind firstly is that if the number of elements, if the number of elements or let's say n, if it's even, then I can simply say that the answer would be uh, minus 1, 1 up to n by 2 times. So if it's n is equal to 2, I can simply say minus 1 and 1. If n is equal to 4, I can say it's minus 1, then 1, then minus 1, then 1. This is because uh, since we are having pairs of minus 1 and 1, so the entire sum would be 0. And also if we select any two elements, any two consecutive elements, let's say we select this element or this element. So over here also, the sum would be 0. So this would be a valid solution if uh, n is divisible by 2. However, what would happen if n is odd? So would it all be, be, always be the case that... Uh, the answer doesn't exist or could there be an answer for some n and it might not be the case for others so in the test case itself it's given that for n is equal to 3 answer does not exist so we have to print a no for n is equal to 3 but what about n is equal to 1 so yeah definitely uh, for n is equal to 1 also we will have to print no and n actually cannot be uh, 1 itself because we are checking for elements uh, we have to check for pairs and this doesn't count as a pair so we cannot have pair with a single element so we'll have to, uh, for n is equal to 3, we know the answer is no. Let's check for n is equal to 5. Would there be a possibility where there are 5 elements and the sum of 2 consecutive elements and the sum of the entire array is same? So how do we go about that? So let's try to generalize it. So we know that since, uh, let's say this is the first element, this is the second element, this is the third element, this is the fourth element, right? So now we know that a1 plus a2 should be equal to a3 plus a2 from here what we can say is that a2 and a2 would cancel out and a1 is equal to a3 so the scenario is that there would be a1 over here a2 over here then a1 then a2 then a1 so this scenario would uh, continue so we'll be having so for odd number of uh, odd numbers what we'll have is we'll have n plus 1 by 2 a's and n minus 1 by 2 b's so this is something we definitely know now what we want to do is that let's say n plus 1 by a plus n plus n minus 1 by 2 into b should give me so this is the entire sum because in total i have n plus 1 by 2 a's so over here example uh, I, the n is equal to uh, 5 so i have n plus 1 by 2 that is 3 a's so let's call them let's call them a's and let's call them b's so these are b's and these are a's and i have n minus 1 by 2 that is 2 b's so this formula holds so their sum should be equal to the sum of a pair and a pair would be a plus b you can check over here so any pair would be a plus b so we'll write it as it is right now let's try to solve this particular equation so what we can say is n plus 1 by 2 into a minus a is equal to b minus n minus 1 by 2 into b from this we can say n plus 1 into a minus 2a is equal to b minus 2b minus n minus 1 into b let's take a common a n plus 1 minus 2 is equal to b 2 minus n plus 1 let's simplify this n minus 1 is equal to b 3 minus n or we can say a divided by 3 minus n is equal to b divided by n minus 1. 
since we don't want fractions so what we can say is that for any n let a be equal to 3 minus n so if a is equal to 3 minus n then this entire terms becomes 1 so if a if a is equal to 3 minus n then b is equal to n minus 1 so this term would go over here and we can simply say b is equal to n minus 1 so this is the simple answer so we can simply say that if uh, so over here the answer won't exist for n is equal to 3 because as soon as n is equal to 3 or n is equal to 1 these term would become 0 and the answers won't be uh, would be indefined because we are dividing by zero term that cannot happen that's not defined so we don't have answers for n is equal to 3 and n is equal to 1 so for these we can directly print no else we can print yes followed by 3 minus n and n minus 1 that is the value of a and b as we derived so let's have a look at the code itself so this is the code for it so what I have done is if n is equal to 1 or n is equal to 3 then I am simply printing no else the answer is yes and what I am doing is that I am printing 3 minus n and n minus 1 n times. So what I have done over here is that these form a pair so I am I am uh, increasing my loop by, by twice also for the last element at the last a is coming and not b right so it uh, the array always starts with a and ends with a b uh, starts with a and ends with a a if in case it's odd so that's why I mentioned three, 3 minus n to appear at the last index only so I hope this code was pretty neat and clear and so was the algorithm behind it I also submitted the solution and this was a AC let me show what I'll do is I'll put a link to this particular solution in the pinned comment you can have a view from that if there are any doubts you can let me know I'll be more than willing to help you out. Thanks a lot guys.